guys, it's Cara here and I'm behind the scenes on the set of Silent Comedy with the one and only Patrick Collins. Yay! Hi! Hi! Welcome! Thank you! Thanks Ta for having me. No worries, anytime. Yeah, So it's good to know. Yeah, anytime. It's, you can come in this room. This requires a key card to get in here as well. So I know. It's, yeah. Well, I can um, set you up if you want. <laughs> so, I think I'm a student here now, great. Yay! So tell us about your show. Yeah, um, uh, it's basically... It's, uh, I, I was, I was very inspired by like, uh, Umbilical Brothers early in the day when I grew up. I loved to kind of their attitude of going, okay, we need to make mime, uh, cool and bring it into the modern era. And it turns out that sound was the way to do that with it. So that's kind of what my bit is. Like, it's like, I, I'm, because I, I do mime because I didn't have friends in high school. So from there, uh, I've, I've just... Uh, I'm doing mime, but with sound effects. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> so you I get just kind of I just realised what I am as a performer by saying it out loud, and I'm horribly disappointed in myself. Oh well. I'm sure people are going to watch the show. Yeah. yeah. Oh no. Oh no. Thank you for having me. Oh. <laughs> my so life is shambles. This is my. I'm fine. Yeah. You're good? Yeah, no, cool. thank you. I needed that moment. <laughs> kind of, yeah. So tell me about your start in the industry. So was yeah. there a pinnacle moment where you thought, I'm going to be a comedian? Yeah, it was... Um, I'd been doing, like, uh, public speaking and debating in high school. And then uh, one of my teachers said to me, oh, there's uh, the comedy festival's doing a, a competition. You can do stand-up. It's called Class Clowns. And I was like, that sounds like a horrible, horrible idea. And then I did it and I won it and it was great. And then I was like, oh, cool, I want to I do this. This is where a, a crowd tells me that they love me every single, with everything, with everything that I do. I want that forever. That'd be great. And then I did more gigs and they didn't go anywhere near as well. And I was like, okay, so I've actually got to work on this. Here we go. <laughs> and so, and then I, I'd already done, I'd already been doing magic since I was a kid. And so, yeah, now my shows are just comedy and magic. Wow. But they're separate. They okay. are not. They are not the same thing. There are heaps of comedy magicians. There aren't many yeah. uh, comedians who can also do magic yeah. on the side. Right. So yeah. this is you go to one gig and you're a comedian, and then you go to another gig and you're a magician. Yeah, the magician gigs tend to be the kids' entertainment gigs. Are they, like, yeah. Are the magician gigs funny and the comedic? Gigs magical? Uh, the magic gigs are funny. The comedic gigs have absolutely no reference to magic. It, what, the one thing I've learned over doing all the stand-up comedy rooms is that comedians hate magicians just right. with a horrible, horrible passion. So I, unless I get to know a comedian really well, do I kind of go, hey, look, mate, I'm like, I'm, I'm a magician. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And yeah. then they feel they're quite betrayed. And, and then, then you've bonded, maybe. No, and then okay. they've kind of got to decide: is this is this relationship worth keeping up? And right. you know, often it's no. And yeah, Ma magic is don't don't get into it. <laughs> don't. So who, who do you look up to in the industry then? Ah, uh, very good question. I uh, uh, the one of uh, Danielle Walker. She was uh, she won Best Newcomer at Melbourne Comedy Festival this year, and she's just my favourite comedian going around. She's just uh, her style is obscure and weird, and uh, my mum didn't get it, and it's the best. It's just my favourite style. Yeah. It's 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 very very odd, but but she's incredible. But then um, in the industry, I mean, like I grew up on Tim Minchin and that kind of musical style as well, all that. Kind of thing. But then, look, Umbilical Brothers is what got me into the physical comedy type thing. They were, I'd, I was on a, I was on a cruise late last year, and David Collins, who's the Umbilical Brother with the long hair, was just on the cruise. And I went up to him and said, like, David, sorry, I'm a really big fan of your work, and he was really, really drunk, and he just <laughs> didn't quite hear me and just kind of st stumbled away. And I was like, right. okay, that's, this was like maybe the largest moment in my life, and uh -huh. this was ruined. Oh so, God. Wow. <laughs> I was in seasick for four days. It was a horrible experience. Oh, no. Yeah. Did you see him again? No, that was it. Oh. It was a big cruise. Okay. Yeah, that yeah. was. I hoped, but that was it. You might one day. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully not in a cruise. Yeah, in a I'm professional not gonna go, sense. I'm not going to go on another cruise on the slight hope that I might catch another umbilical brother. I really... <laughs> Do you have any advice for people who want to get into silent comedy, physical comedy? Um, yeah, if you if you want to if you want to get into silent comedy, 
for a start, watch watch old timey silent comedy videos. Like not 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 super silent. Like you don't have to go all the way back to Charlie Chaplin, but even just like you know the Laurel and Hardy kind of level of like when they just got into talkies and they're just focusing on physical stuff. You need to watch all that stuff so you know. Hey, you can't do any of that anymore. These are done jokes. You can't. <laughs> it's like we've all moved on from the everything you're watching now. You may find it hilarious. No one else does. We're tired of it. Like it's yeah. like, and I love Laurel and Hardy, but it's like you've got to. You gotta watch the old stuff, not for inspiration, to go, okay, cool, you got, I gotta do something different from this. How do you do that? How do you look at something and go, this has been done, I'm gonna do something different? Oh, uh, I mean, some, I mean, if you can't do that, just find a different job. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a field for you. Yeah. I'm like, so that's your skill set, do things differently. Yeah, exactly right, exactly yeah. right. Whatever you're doing, ugh. Stop yeah. it. Like, yeah, I, I, I think you've, you've got to, I, I think one of the best methods I, I've always found is just try and like, try, try and do something where just, just throw, throw yourself a loop, okay? Like, okay, well this isn't, no, no one's gonna see this bit coming. Cool, is it funny? It might not be. It doesn't matter, it's unexpected. Just try and trick people into thinking you're funny. <laughs> Talking of unexpected, yes. is, can you make us laugh in five seconds? That's a very, very good question. Go for it. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs>